Hi, I'm Desiree Hadley. And I'm Crystal Rosa. And welcome to another episode of Hold the Line with Mayor Raj J. Baraka. Mayor, how are you? I'm good. How you doing? So today we're talking about a number of topics. We're going to discuss, of course, the COVID-19 check-in, the executive order you signed into place last week, the anniversary of George Floyd's death, the roundtable discussion featuring yourself and President Obama, and the lifting of the mask mandate, which will start this Friday and was announced by Governor Murphy. So the first topic, the COVID-19 check-in. So as of yesterday, we're currently at 17 new positive cases, zero deaths, which is good news. And my question is, should Norkers begin to feel a sense of relief um, around COVID-19, less worry? How do you, what, do you, what is your take well, on I that? Think, I think that um, we're doing pretty good. I mean, better than we have ever been. Um, and so people should be relieved about that, that we're doing the right things, that the work that we've done has paid off. Uh, about almost 50% of all the adults in the city have been vaccinated at least once. I mean, people are doing, doing, people didn't think that that was going to happen. It is happening. And, uh, you know, our infection rate, uh, three day average is very low, uh, in two percent tile, uh, seven day average at 3%, something around that number. And it's, uh, pretty good. And, and they should feel, a, uh, uh, some kind of relief that we've gotten through the worst of it. Right. Mayor, how are the city's vaccination efforts going? Uh, pretty good. Uh, obviously, we should we want to ramp it up even more. We're doing a lot of uh, uh, pop up vaccination sites in communities and neighborhoods, churches, parks. We're going to continue to do that, partnering with other organizations to get more people vaccinated. Uh, so it's going well, but we want to ramp it up even more so we could be over 70 percent before the, um, after the summer ends, before the, uh, you know we get back to school. Okay, so last week you signed an executive order basically detailing the following. We're allowing indoor dining establishments to stay open until 2 a.m., outdoor dining establishments until midnight. Restaurants could temporarily convert curbside parking spaces into streeteries, parklets, expanding outdoor dining opportunities. You have requested large outdoor and indoor venues to implement a mandatory vaccine policy before people enter a building or their building and face coverings are required to be worn except when an individual is eating or drinking in an area where the person is alone or if the individual is with a group of people that he or she knows have been fully vaccinated. Right. So with regards to the request for the large indoor and outdoor venues to implement this vaccine policy, what feedback are you hearing from the venues? Uh, venues? They, they, they want people to feel safe. They feel like they'll get more customers if people feel safe when they go there. This is not a restaurant. You're talking about a hockey game, you know, a basketball game, a concert, an event at NJ Pack. People want to feel like if they go there, they're going to be okay. And, um, you know, so a lot of them have looked on it positively. They want to alter it a little bit, and I don't have any issue with that. For example, making, if, if you prove that you have a negative test in a couple of days prior uh, to coming there, they, they want to implement that part of it, and I don't have an issue with that at all. I think that that is encouraging and, and giving special like privilege and opportunity for people who have been vaccinated. What positive impact will the expansion of the outdoor dining opportunity um, have on Newark's economy as well as on resident morale? Yeah, you know, people want to, I mean, this is probably going to be the, one of the most important summers that we've had in a long time. You know, people are, are coming out uh, after this COVID and uh, around this time, and we want to make sure that they enjoy the city, that they see that it's coming back, that we're alive and still well and moving. There's been a lot of ideas and development that we had prior to this that we were waiting for, and COVID really just slowed us down, but it's an opportunity to get back at it, right at it. And uh, so it, it, it lets people know that the city is alive. Okay, so with this executive order, although parklets aren't new to Newark, the vast expansion of outdoor dining is so um, there is an expected financial impact or financial benefit to small businesses with this um, executive order. So can businesses or restaurants, small businesses expect to see this as an option that will stay in place beyond the October 31st expiration date of this? Yep, sure. With, absolutely. With proper permitting, proper inspections, fees, all of that. I mean, 
you're, you're going to have to, we have now have to treat this like we would treat any other expansion of a business or growth of a business uh, in the city. We're doing this because we know people were hurt during the pandemic. And once we recover from this, you obviously are going to have to follow all the rules and procedures that the city has. Okay, so yesterday marked the anniversary of George Floyd's death. Um, last year, he was murdered at the hands of a Minneapolis uh, police officer. And after his death, there were uh, protests around the world, around the nation. The world too. The world too, yeah. for days, right? They lasted for days. This also inspired a discussion around defunding the police. And Newark is currently reallocating 5% of their Newark police budget into, to fund initiatives focused on police reform. And Newark is currently being looked at as a model city for police reform by a number of different cities. Um, it's been, been published in, a, you know, in, in articles and things like that. So do you feel any amount of pressure to get this right and to perfect the police um, relationship between the police officers in Newark and black and brown people here in Newark? Well, you know, we already felt the pressure to do that because one did the consent decree and our desire to get them out because we tired of paying all of this money. Uh, but we believe it's a good thing. So we already have pressure and pressure from the community, our peers, to get this right. And I think it's been helpful. We just want to continue doing what we're doing and codify it and make sure it's permanent and not based on individuals that are, are in office or in place or in jobs, but that it it's systemic and endemic in the system itself. So we know there's a lot of work to do. I mean, Newark is nowhere near a place where we need to uh, like celebrate, you know, or put a flag in the ground and say we've arrived. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. The problem is everybody, every, everywhere else is so worse. That's the real problem, right? Uh, you know, we've, we've made incremental gains. And because we've done that, it seems like, you know, we've arrived at somewhere, you know. Sometimes uh, when you've been in the basement so long, you get to the first floor, you think you're on the roof, right? So, at the end of the day, we, we, we're, we're making progress. Right. Looking back now, Mayor, on the death of George, George Floyd, um, what did this incident mean to you then? How did you react and what does it mean to you now? Well, I mean, it wasn't new to me. I mean, we've been always being killed, you know, by the hands of the police and, and racists and throughout this country's history. And it's not the first time uh, uh, something heinous was caught on video like that where people saw these things take place i think the climate was different you know because of covid and everything that was going on at the time and the response that the community had the organizing the activism the black lives matter movement all of that it can't be discounted the work that these folks did to put this front and center and begin to excite change so that's that's important uh so i felt like uh and i still do that this is a moment uh, that we have to use to push as many things through as we, as we possibly can because I don't think this moment lasts always. I think while it's here, we have to do as much as we can and be organized to get the things that we need and desire uh, during this period. What changes have taken place in your Well, since then, the uh, Office of Violence Prevention and Trauma Recovery, uh, we've been hiring social workers maybe two years before George Floyd was murdered. Uh, we've codified that and now turned it into uh, uh, something real in terms of the Violence Prevention Office. It'll be the first year in Newark's history that when the police academy graduates, a few social workers will be graduating on the stage with them. Uh, and so it, it, it signals a change in culture, not just practice and policy, but in culture, and a shifting, you know, reimagining that people are talking about. We actually are trying to put our feet on the pedal and, and, and get this stuff done, you know. And the last question I have on this, so what serious changes need to take place like around the country and how can they be achieved? Well, there's a myriad of things that need to happen. I know in Congress, they're fighting around this George Floyd and policing bill. It's a moderate bill. It's not even like a radical uh, bill. It's very moderate and they're having a hard time passing it. I think that they should at least pass that as a first step mm -hmm. and begin to uh, push further on, on, on states uh, where we are. People need to push their state legislatures and the governors to do more, their attorney generals to do more, and transparency and policing, civilian oversight and policing, uh, begin to uh, figure out this qualified immunity and, and, and change that and do something different there, to change the policies and practices and training of police officers, and making sure the police represent the community that they live, that, that, that they police in. I mean, it's, it only has been the last four or five years uh, five years or so that Newark has a police department that's 80% uh, black and brown. 
and uh, you know, and with a city that's 80% black and brown, you know, it's, it's for years it's been the opposite. Okay, so moving right along, Mayor. So by the time this episode of Hold the Line airs tonight, you will have joined President Obama and other community leaders in a virtual roundtable discussion, part of the My Brother's Keeper uh, forum, to talk about the unprecedented activism that's happened since George Floyd's death, the work that remains, and reimagining public safety and policing. Why is it, why is it important to gather folks and have these types of discussions? Well, it's important because you need to keep uh, on the public mind and, and in the public space the idea that there needs to be reform, that uh, you know racism, white supremacy needs to be challenged, inequity needs to be fixed. Uh, and, and the first uh, step to get that done is to begin putting it on a, in a public discussion. People need to talk about this, argue it, debate it. Uh, and you know President Obama is uh, the right person to, to, to push this forward. Uh, at this time to get people to start talking about it. Whether they agree with everything President Obama says or not, he's definitely the right person to put this out in the front so people can have the discussion. And that's what needs to happen. So we can't stop having discussion in our privacy of our home, at a barbershop, the beauty parlor, you know, three, three people in the workplace. We really need to have a public discussion about inequity and race uh, in this country and, and, and in order for us to get to see the changes that we need to see. What are you hoping to get out of this conversation? Well, I, I think that uh, the, the, the first thing is to put some issues out there, talk about some of the things that still need to happen and what, what the death of George Floyd really means uh, uh, to this country and what it means to us and, and, and what we should be doing in this moment and the things that have happened. And a lot of people, like you said, saying it's unprecedented, but there's been a lot of organizing that's taken place over the years. It's not the first time that people have put issues before Congress that have fought, that have done incredible things to move this country uh, closer to a democracy. It's just that we're in, a, we're in an era of social media, of all of these things, so people get to see it quicker. Uh, and it gets, it gets to expand faster. So, I mean, we have to use that to make the changes we need. So we're gonna move on to the um, mask mandate since we are running out of time. So the Governor Murphy has announced that the indoor mask mandate and social distancing policies will be, requirements will be lifted on May 28th, which is this Friday. So um, Crystal, did you wanna jump in there and ask a question on that? Sure, so as Desiree mentioned, the mask mandate will be lifted this Friday, May 28th. However, masks will still be required when taking public transportation in hospitals and medical settings. Um, the six foot distancing rule will also be lifted at restaurants, gyms, retail stores. So how will Newark follow this yeah. executive order and what does this mean for Newark residents? Well, we, we, we're gonna uh, follow the governor's executive order. I'm going to uh, tell store owners and other folks to do, if they want people to wear masks, you have a right to tell people to wear masks when they come into your establishment. And um, you, you should say that um, if you feel uh, uncomfortable. and residents to tell them to carry their mask, you know, uh, like your wallet, your phone. That's the new normal. You got your phone, you got your keys, you got your wallet, hand sanitizer and mask. That's what I'm going to do. I'm never going to, I'm always going to have my mask from now on uh, to the end. Like I used to look at people at the airport with masks on and thought they were crazy. Now I know why they got their mask. I'm going to have mine in my pocket. As soon as I feel uncomfortable, I'm going to throw my mask right on. Uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to urge other people to do the same. And what piece of advice can you lend to those watching um, how to go into the holiday weekend with this new mask mandate taking place in New Jersey? Just, yep, just be careful. Like, don't go all out. Everybody is, don't have integrity. So people who say they've been vaccinated may not have been. And be careful. And you should ask people. And don't be scared to ask people that. If they're in your face, if they're laughing, talking, speaking, spitting, sneezing, coughing, ask them, have you been vaccinated? If not, move away from them. Put your mask on. Do the things that you need to do to protect yourself and your family. And remember, just because I was talking to somebody last night who was saying they could beat it. But just because you can beat it don't mean the other people that you're around can. So you can catch it and pass it to somebody else who may not be able to do that. So don't just be mindful of yourself. Be mindful of the community as a whole and make good decisions. Right. Okay, Mayor, that's all we have time for, for this episode. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And remember to stay safe.